Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy D Lord and welcome back to another NBA 2K16 rebuild. So this time we're going to be using the Chicago Bulls, you guys. They made a lot of offseason acquisitions. They added Dwayne Wade, they added Rajon Rondo, but they also went ahead and traded Derrick Rose. So you're not really sure if this team is in the true rebuilding mode or not. So it looked as if they were heading in that rebuild direction, but then they made moves like getting Rondo and getting Dwayne Wade. So you're not really sure if they're in a the true rebuild mode or not. So we're going to go ahead take over the team see what we can actually do with the Chicago Bulls they have a pretty solid lineup to start off with nothing too great but we're gonna see if we can actually win a championship with this team so looking at the roster starting off you have Jimmy Butler who is fantastic Dwayne Wade the 88 overall so he's still a very good player even at the age of 34 years old you have Rajon Rondo who's the 83 overall and then you got like Taj Gibson Denzel Valentine uh, Meryl Chick, Robin Lopez, Aaron Brooks, players like that who are decent players and um, probably going to try to get traded in the first season. So we have $9 million in cap space. Dwayne Wade, $23 million a year, $24 million a year. I don't plan on trading him, so we're going to go ahead and just take that contract. Rajon Rondo definitely might be traded at $14 million a year. Robin Lopez definitely will be traded at $13 million a a year so when you go to trade finder the first thing i like to do sometimes is look at the potential and see where some of these rookies are so denzel valentine only has a b minus potential so it's really not a huge point of trying to keep this guy on our team but the first move i want to go ahead and try to do i think we're going to try to trade taj gibson away 31 year old 77 overall power forward let's see what we can try to get back for him hopefully we can get back some pretty good talent as we try to trade this guy so i'm looking through i don't see any offers that are like jumping right at me I do see Jared Selinger. That's not a bad move in my opinion. But we have to get rid of Doug McDermott. But that might not be that bad. And I think that was probably the only great move that I've seen right now with Tyus Gibson. So let's go ahead and look at some other guys first. Let's look at Merrill Chick. We try to get rid of him. He's a two-star value. So let's see what we can get back. Probably not a whole lot. But if we can get some decent role players back, I won't mind going that route either. So... You guys are actually, this is my first time running through this. Actually, I have I didn't even do a practice run with this, but I do like Marcus Morris, and I think that might be the best move for us, honestly. Five million for three years. So he's pretty much we pretty much have him at a very good contract. So let's go ahead, let's make that deal happen. So we got us a power forward back, which was not bad at all. Let's go ahead and see what we could trade Aaron Brooks for. Because I don't need Aaron Brooks. We could probably get a backup point guard somewhere else. But let's see what type of players we get. We get Kelly Olenek, Bryce Johnson, but still nothing fantastic or nothing really jumping out at me for these two players. And I think we might hold off and see what else we can get from other teams first before we make any of these deals. So none of these deals were really great to me. Um, let's see what we can get for Bobby Portis. That might not be a bad move. Maybe link him up with I don't know if I want to do him by himself. Let's do Bobby Portis by himself first. See what type of offers we do get back from him. Because I know he progresses a little quick. So let's see what type of pieces we get back. Hopefully we get a good solid piece back. If not, we'll try to go ahead and match him up with somebody else later. Yeah, it actually doesn't look like we'll get too much back. We can get Gortat, but that's $11 million guaranteed for three years. And I don't know if I want to do that. Let's go ahead and look at... Let's go ahead and package up, I guess, Taz Gibson and maybe Robin Lopez. I don't know what kind of players we'll get with that deal because Robin Lopez gets $13 million a year. So we have to get back somebody with a pretty high contract and really not a lot. So let's go ahead and just trade Taz Gibson by himself then. We got a pretty decent power forward, so we don't really need a star power forward back. Maybe go center, and now if we go with Kelly Olenek, that might give us a chance to go ahead and trade where other centers we already have a backup one so that might be the best move i'm looking at it well so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna make this move yeah we're gonna go ahead and make that move i don't know why i thought about that one for a second um kelly olenic we get your break up we're gonna go ahead and trade a 2018 first round pick and Taj gibson so we got pretty decent players back it gives us another center so we have a little bit more flexibility at that center position which is definitely good. So now we can kind of get rid of Lopez for almost anything at this point. Which is definitely great. So we get rid of that $13 million in cap space. 
Brandon Wright is there. That's not a bad move. I'm trying to think what move can I actually do. This one's not that bad either, honestly. But I don't want to get rid of McDermott right now. I might end up trading him regardless. But right now, I think we should hold on to him. And I don't know. Let's go ahead and I'm trying to think of a team that typically trades centers a lot. I think, hold on, let's look at Rudy Gobert. He's always typically available. So let's see what they look for or what they want back from him. We can move Denzel Valentine, Aaron Brooks, or we can move Bobby Portis for him, which isn't bad either. But we could hold on to Portis, move Valentine, move Aaron Brooks, move a first round pick. I think this is what we're going to go with, even though I like Valentine and I like his contract. We get Rodney Hood back. He shouldn't be that expensive either. Or we could just move Bobby Portis. Definitely don't know between these two right here, you guys. I'm definitely going back and forth right now. I do like Rodney Hood. Let's go with this deal so we can try to keep Valentine for now. And see if we can try to get Rodney Hood cheaper. So let's go back to the Jazz. See what they want just for Rodney Hood. Because Rodney Hood would not be a bad backup point, uh, backup shooting guard right now. We get rid of Dinwiddie. We get Aaron Brooks and Tony Snell in the second round pick. That's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and trade for Rodney Hood. Get rid of Aaron Brooks. All right, so we got that trade down. Let's go ahead and look at what our roster looks like right now. A lot of people are going to go down because of the chemistry. That should go up as we start simulating these games. But right now, yeah, Jimmy Butler's good. Dwayne Wade's good. Rondo. Rudy Gobert. Let's try to trade Rondo. See what we can get for Rajon Rondo. Chris Middleton. Mike Conley. That contract is just crazy. Kemba Walker, which is not a bad deal. I don't know why they would want to do this. I guess because of Ramon Sessions' contract. But we can go ahead and take that. We'll go ahead and upgrade that point guard for a little bit cheaper. And now we just go and try to trade Ramon Sessions if we can. Making a lot of moves here in this first season. So, Ramon Sessions, see what type of pieces we could get back. Preferably a player with one year left on his deal, unless he's very good. This one might not be bad either, getting Benbury. Um, and I think that might be the best deal. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Trade him for DeAndre. Um, we get Jack as well. And four years at $1 million. That's absolutely crazy. So we go ahead and make that move. And now I think we're looking pretty good, you guys. So pretty solid roster right now. We got Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, Kimball Walker, Rudy Gobert. Um, power forward is going to be Marcus Morris for right now. We have Rodney Hood. We have Jared Jack, which is decent. He's probably just a one-year piece. Robin Lopez, we still haven't traded. So let's go ahead and <laughs> almost forgot about him. Let's go ahead and try to move him right now. And see what type of pieces we could get back. If we could get another star power forward somewhere, that would definitely be great. I'm just not sure of where we will be able to get one from. That is definitely the question. So maybe Amir Johnson, he's on a one year deal. Um it's another center instead of a power forward, but a one year deal he has bird rights so we could go over the cap to try to bring him back i don't see him asking for 12 million a year but you never really know sometimes the security is pretty good knowing you're getting somebody cheaper but for this case why not just go ahead and get johnson for one year pretty much see what happens or we get put him on the trade block and see right away see what type of piece we can get back from him And I think we're pretty much good. I think we're going to be good just holding on to him. Um, we could get Monte Ellis, which is definitely cheaper. But we have Rodney Hood, so there's really no point of doing that. We could go with Ish Smith. Lower than this will be getting players pretty cheap for a while. Or we could just hold on to Amir Johnson. All right, so I think that's probably what we're going to do. Yeah, so we're going to hold on. 
to Johnson right now. Let's be one of moving for Robert Covington. Which also might not be a bad move for us. His contract is up, so I don't know what we'll do. So, for right now, this is our roster for right now. We got Jimmy Butler. Let's go ahead and look at our starting lineup. It'll be easier to look at it that way. Alright, so we have Kimball Walker, Dwayne Wade, Jimmy Butler, Marcus Morris, and Rudy Gobert as our starting five. So not a bad starting five. Our bench could definitely use a little bit of help. But we held on. So we have Rodney Hill. We held on to Valentine for now. But let's go ahead and see if we should trade Valentine. I know I'm going back and forth with who I should trade. Let's go ahead and try to trade Valentine. Who has the higher potential rating? They both have B minus. So we'll go ahead and try to trade either Valentine or DeAndre. See what type of players we can get back. Just to fill up our bench a little bit. We can get Tony Roten and Tony Allen back. That's not that bad. You get rid of Dinwiddie as well though if we do that move. And really nothing great. We get Damari Carroll back, but I don't see no no major upgrades of getting Damari Carroll. So um yes, yeah, so I think we might just hold on to him for right now. Hopefully they get better. That's probably what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and simulate this first season then come back at the end of the year hopefully we're a playoff team we should at least make the playoffs I don't know how much damage we'll do in there but we'll go ahead and simulate the season I'll come back at the end of this regular season all right guys so we actually went 53 and 29 this year Russell Westbrook is the MVP 22.4 points a game Pretty much almost averaged a triple-double, eight and a half rebounds, and just under nine assists. Ben Simmons is the rookie of the year, averaging 20 points a game and nine rebounds. Jaleel Okafor, the sixth man of the year, averaging 17 points a game, 7.3 rebounds coming off of the bench. DeAndre Jordan is the defensive player of the year. CJ McCollum, the most improved player, and then Billy Donovan and the OKC Thunder. They went 63-19 and 19 without Kevin Durant. So, very good roster for them. I'm um, looking at the All NBA first team. You got Russell Westbrook, Damian Lillard, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, and Stephen Adams, which is absolutely crazy. Um, the second team got Stephen Curry, LeBron James is on the second team, and then Ben Simmons is on that second team as well. Chris Bosh, Marcus Saul, James Harden, DeMar DeRozan on the third team. All defensive first team: Eric Bledsoe, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan. We got Rudy Gobert, who made the All Defensive Second Team, which is definitely good. And I don't think we got anybody on the all-rookie team. So, the seed was seed we end up getting. So, we have the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. We're going to be taking on the Milwaukee Bucks. So let's go ahead and look at our roster real quick at the end of the year. We have Jimmy Butler, who's now a 91 overall. Dwayne Wade, who's an 89 overall. Kemba Walker. Rudy Gobert, who's an 83 overall. Amir Johnson even moved up to a 79. Rodney Hood is at a 78. Marcus Morris at a 77. Jared Jack at a 77. Denzel Valentine at a 77. So, we got a lot of great pieces here. And our, our bench actually came into his own a little bit. I didn't think they were going to be that good right away. We're taking on the Bucks, I believe. So, um, Ante Kupo's at 88. Chris Middleton at 82. Greg Moreau. Jabari Parker. We have pretty even rosters, but I think our roster might be a little bit better than their roster. So, hopefully, we can come through and win this series. So, game one, we are at home. We actually win this one, which is good. Win game two, so we take care of business at home. We lose in Milwaukee. We end up stealing one on the road, and we win in five. So that's definitely good. And we're going to be taking on the Boston Celtics, who are a six seed. So let's go ahead and take a look at their roster right now. They got Isaiah Thomas. They got Al Horford, Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, Taj Gibson, who we traded to him, Jalen Brown, who is a 78 overall, so he's coming into his own. Marcus Smart is there, and then Robin Lopez. So they got a pretty good team. Then they fall off um, when it comes to their roster. So pretty solid team as well. This should be an interesting series. Let's go ahead and sim game one. We're able to take care of business in Chicago, but we lose a home game. Heading into game three, we lose this one. We need to win this game four, and we do that. So the series is two to two. We lose game five. We need to win this game or this season is over and we get eliminated by the Boston Celtics. It's not the way we definitely wanted to go out. 
Let's go ahead and simulate the rest of the playoffs. The Celtics end up taking on the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. The Warriors defeated the OKC Thunder. So Kevin Durant, apparently he made the right decision going to the Warriors because they defeated the Thunder. So let's go ahead and simulate this series. And the Golden State Warriors are your NBA champions, you guys. So go ahead and simulate to the offseason. KD is the Finals MVP, averaging 25.8 points a game, 8.6 rebounds a game, and 5.5 and assists a game. Looking at who is going to the Hall of Fame, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. So I'm not sure if we have any draft picks or not. I'm not too worried about it. So we'll go ahead and simulate straight to the rookie signing, see who we got. We ended up getting a 64 overall, so we're not actually going to sign him. As for the player options, um, he declined his, but that's not that big of a problem. Ronnie Hood would definitely going to go ahead and put uh, um, accept his option. And we'll go ahead and accept his as well. Looking at players who declined theirs, LeBron James declined his, KD declined his. So it will be interesting to see which one of these players actually hit free agency. Because even Blake Griffin, even Kyle Lowry, they all declined their options. As for qualifying offers, we're going to go ahead and put a qualifying offer on all of these players. There's no reason really not to because that's a cheap price to actually go ahead and try to keep some of these people. Um, Rudy Gobert said he will test free agency. Amir Johnson contract has expired, but he does have bird rights, which means we can go over the cap to bring him back. So we definitely want to wait a little bit, see how free agency plays out, and then once we get the players we want, if he's still there, hopefully we can go ahead and get Amir Johnson back. Um, everybody else looks like they want to actually test free agency. Which is not a problem at all. Kelly Olenek, he can't really leave unless we, unless we allow him to leave since he is restricted. So that is definitely good. So let's go ahead and go to free agency see who's all available. LeBron James is available, you guys. Chris Paul is available. Ante Kupo is available. Paul Millsap. J.J. Reddick. So a lot of pretty good pieces. So is Rudy Gobert. I'm going to see if we can somehow manage to sign LeBron James. Because I don't think Rudy Gobert has bird rights. So if we sign LeBron James, we're not going to bring him back. But if we sign LeBron James, we could definitely go after Amir Johnson and bring him back. So no offers right now. Oh, he has one offer from the Phoenix Suns. Hopefully he doesn't sign that right away. If he does not sign that right away, that would allow us to get room to bring LeBron James in first. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's give him the player option, the no trade um, clause is our best way of doing it and let's max out his contract and let's see if we can actually bring in LeBron so viewing the offers we're up there hopefully he can come join Dwayne Wade in Chicago that would definitely be crazy you guys if he joined us in Chicago and I guess for right now we don't want to make any other moves because we want to see LeBron signs but we're definitely watching Rudy Gobert and we're watching Amir Johnson so LeBron James has accepted our offer which is great hopefully Amir Johnson hasn't signed he has not signed yet so the good news about that is that we can go over the cap to bring him in so let's look at our roster right now we have LeBron James we have Jimmy Butler we have Dwayne Wade Kimball Walker Rodney Hood if we could bring back Amir Johnson we could let Rudy Gobert walk and we will be pretty much set, you guys. So let's go back to free agency. And let's make sure we bring back Amir Johnson. We could go over the cap to bring him back. So that's not bad at all. Currently, the highest bid is three years, $27 million. So let's go ahead and give him a pretty... Make sure he's over what everyone else is to, bring, to pretty much ensure that he comes back. So everyone's giving around $9 million. Let's go ahead and give him about $10 million a year every single season. That's clearly going to go over $30 million. And he should accept this contract. So let's see what Amir Johnson ends up doing. Go to view offers. We are the highest offer. So hopefully he accepts this deal. Rudy Gobert. I don't think we can sign him. So we can't. But it looked like Amir Johnson accepted the deal. So that is great. So great planning on our part. Definitely able to do that. And I think we're pretty much good. Because I don't think we can sign a lot of other pieces. But LeBron James, Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, Kimball Walker, Amir Johnson, and Rodney Hood, you guys. This is a nasty lineup here. Absolutely crazy. So hopefully um, we can go ahead and win some games this season. Let's see what else. Do I need a backup point guard? I probably could use another backup point guard, but it'll be for a mid-level exception probably. So let's see who's all available. Chris Paul is still there, which is crazy. He only has two offers. Look at his two offers. The Jazz and the 76ers. Not really interested in any of those offers, which is crazy. But let's go ahead and look at like Seth Curry. See if we can try to bring him in. I don't think we can. 
he wants too much money. Um, maybe you know Michael Carter Williams is a restricted free agent. So it's Dinwiddie. So I guess we'll just leave it where we're at, and we'll just bring back Dinwiddie. Kelly Olynyk. I don't think we can sign him, but it's all good. We should be able to sign Dinwiddie. So we signed Dinwiddie back. As for centers, uh, not a great position to be in, but hopefully we can just get somebody who's very cheap. Maybe Samuel Delibert for one year. Um, hopefully we'll be able to sign him at least. All right, so we signed him for a year, so we got a center, and I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's go to player progressions, see how these players actually progress. LeBron James is 96, Jimmy Butler a 90, Dwayne Wade dropped down to an 86, but we still got Kemba Walker, Amir Johnson went up, Rondy Hood went up a little bit, Marcus Morris went up, Denzel Valentine went up. So we have a very good roster so far. Let's go to training camps, and we'll go ahead and try to improve some of these players. I think it's 2018 draft class. So we'll go to training camps right now. Oops, almost skipped it. All right, so untapped potential. We have two of them to actually use. Um, the first one, I guess we we'll use it for DeAndre. Then we'll use it for Valentine. So we use it to, for our two small fours. We have a lot of small fours now, but um, we have a very solid roster. So if I can find Valentine, I don't know where he is on this list. He's right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and use it on them too. And we'll advance to the regular season. Alright, as for trading, I don't think there's anybody that I feel that we need to trade right now. I really don't. We could go ahead and offer out maybe Valentine again, even though we just upgraded them. See what else we can try to get back. But I don't think there's really nothing... That's going to be worth us making a move right now and affecting our chemistry because I think we're pretty much good to go. So, our chemistry is currently at a 96. We should win a lot of games. We'll go ahead and just simulate this. I'll come back to you guys at the end of this season. All right, guys. So, we end up finishing 55 and 27 this year. Look at this Ben Simmons, his second year in the NBA, and he is the MVP. Averaged about 22 points a game, over 10 rebounds, and 9 assists. So a fantastic year for the second-year player. Um, Harry Giles is going to be the Rookie of the Year. Jaleel Okafor, once again, sixth man. DeAndre Jordan is the defensive player. Um, Laverne is the most improved. And then Tyrone Liu and the Cleveland Cavaliers without LeBron James is actually going to have the best record. 64-18, and 18, only 86 overall, so that's definitely crazy. Uh, All-NBA first team, LeBron James, is back on this list. Um, looking at the second team, we have... I don't think we got anybody on the second team. No, nobody on the second team. Nobody on the third team. Nobody on the defensive team. We do have LeBron James on the second defensive team, and you have Rudy Gobert, who joined the Boston Celtics um, this free agency, and we don't have any rookies. But... We are a three seed this year. Last year we were a two seed. We're a three seed. And we're taking on the Celtics again. So let's look at their roster for right now. This is our roster currently 96, 91, 86, 286 overall players. So hopefully, guys, we can win one because this is Dwayne Wade's last season with the Chicago Bulls. We might try to re-sign him, obviously, but this is actually his last year. Amir Johnson is there. We have a lot of pieces. We just need to come through and get a victory. Let's look at the Celtics lineup. They have a lot more depth than us. Isaiah Thomas, Al Horford, Rudy Gobert, Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Shabazz Muhammad. So let's go ahead and simulate each game and see what happens. We win game one, which is great. We lose game two. We lose game three. This is looking very similar from last season. We win game four. We need that. Can we win this game? Huge game. We're able to win it. Can we close it out in six? Yes, we can. So this time we actually defeat the Boston Celtics in six games but now we're taking on the Philadelphia 76ers you guys let's go ahead and look at their roster Ben Simmons the MVP 89 overall Joel Embiid 88 overall they got Jaleel Okafor as well who's 85 so they got a pretty good team but I think our roster is actually better very front court heavy for the 76ers but hopefully we can come through and win this game so let's go ahead and look at our coaching game plan real quick adjust that as needed this is our roster throughout the year we had Kemba Walker Dwayne Wade Jimmy Butler LeBron James was at the four this season and then Amir Johnson so we had a very good lineup you guys pretty much an all-star lineup but let's go ahead and simulate 
and see what happens. So we are on the road, but we do win game one in Philly. We win game two in Philly. We're going back to Chicago, and we lose in Chicago. We win game four. We're back to Philly for game five, and we lose. But can we close out this series in game six in front of our home court fans? And we're able to do just that. So we're here at the Eastern Conference Finals, taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron James taking on his former team. So let's go ahead and look at the Cavs roster. They got Kyrie Irving. They got Kevin Love. They replaced LeBron with Gordon Hayward. They have Tristan Thompson. They have J.R. Smith. Very good roster, you guys. Is it better than ours? I don't know. Don't think it is, but we'll end up finding out right now. So they have home court advantage. We're in Cleveland, but we win game one in Cleveland. We lose game two. We're back to Chicago. We win that game. Could we win game four at home? We cannot. So we're going back to Cleveland, two to two, and we lose game five. So game six now. We end up winning this one, and now we are here for a game seven. So let's go ahead and simcast this one. See what happens. We are in Cleveland. Let's go ahead and simulate, find out what happens. So we have an early lead, which is great. We need to go ahead and keep extending that, keep extending that. So a 38-point first quarter, definitely one heck of a way to start off a game seven. We look like we're going to have another 30-plus point second quarter. We have 41 points in the second quarter. Absolutely crazy. We are absolutely blowing out the Cleveland Cavaliers right now. But we need to make sure we don't give up any crazy leads because this game is definitely close. But we end up winning this game 118 to 109. We almost collapsed. In the second half, but we come through with the victory. LeBron James had 32 points off of 13 for 16 shooting, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Jimmy Butler had 27 points. Amir Johnson had a double double, 17 to 10. Marcus Morris, 15 and 8. D Wade only had 12 points on 5 of 11 shooting. Kemba Walker had 11 and 5 as well. Let's look at the Cleveland Cavaliers right now. They had J.R. Smith had 19, Tristan Thompson 18. Um, Kyrie had 18 and Kevin Love had 17, but that was about it. So we're taking on the OKC Thunder in the NBA Finals, you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at their roster. And their roster is absolutely stacked. Even without Kevin Durant, they got Russell Westbrook. They got Steven Adams, Victor Oladipo, Ennis Cantor, um, Hassan Whiteside, Cameron Payne, Dion Waiters. It looked like KD probably made a mistake now at this point. But let's go ahead and simulate game one we are on the road and we lose we lose game two things are not looking good we lose game three and are we going to get swept we are able to hold off the sweep which is good but we end up losing in five you guys so we lost pretty bad only scored eight points in the fourth quarter that is an embarrassing way to go out in the nba finals you guys and we cannot do it so russell westbrook is the finals mvp Let's see that well, nobody actually made the Hall of Fame. So let's go right back to rookie signings. I don't think we have a draft pick at all. Um, now apparently we did, and we're not going to sign him, so I'm not worried about that. Team option, we don't have a lot of money. I know that for sure. Um, see who declined. Paul George might be a free agent. So might Carmelo Anthony or LaMarcus Aldridge, but we're not going to have enough money to sign any, any one of them. Rondy Hood, we'll go ahead and put a qualifying offer on him. D. Wade, his contract is up. And pretty much as soon as we sign him, we're not going to have any more money. So he has bird rights, which means we are not going to put an offer on him until pretty much until he signs. Let's see if we can sign Ronnie Hood right away. This will be $6 million. We only have $11 million left, which is crazy. But let's see if he'll sign with us right away. And let's go to free agency. So day one of free agency, Ronnie Hood signs. So we bring him back. And Carmelo Anthony is there, Joel Embiid is there, but we don't have enough money for either one of them. So, I guess Dwayne Wade, we have to try to wait. He has no offers right now, which means we could try to get another piece for $11 million that will help out our team. So, look at the center, see who's available right now. Brooke Lopez is available, but I don't think he will sign for under $11 million. It looks like he might. We might be able to pull something off. Let's go to four-year deals. Let's go with the player option. And maybe... Up this a little bit, or not up it, but take some money away. Let's see if this does anything for Brooke Lopez. Give him that no trade clause, and let's make sure Dwayne Wade doesn't have any offers. So no offers for D Wade, and Brooke Lopez ended up signing with another team, so it did not matter. He went to the Trailblazers. Right now, Dwayne Wade has one offer, so we probably need to offer him from the New York Knicks. We don't want to lose him. 
but we want to make sure that we can sign him. Or <laughs> so it was definitely, definitely playing a, a risk right now by not trying to sign him. You know, we just got to go ahead and bring back Dwayne Wade. I don't want to lose him at all. So let's go ahead and look at his offers currently. Three years, 61 million. So a little over 20 million a year. All right, so he wants a lot of money, obviously. But we need to make sure that we give him pretty much the money that he wants to bring him back. So we're going to go above and beyond, make sure he comes back here to Chicago, which... He should do. So we give him $2 million more than New York. And he ends up signing the contract. So good thing we did offer him at that point. Now we pretty much have no money, you guys. We need to get somebody for it very cheap. And I don't think that's actually going to happen. We pretty much only need big man right now. Look at Tarek Black. See if he will sign anything. He's asking for too much money. So we can't even get him with that um, extension. Maybe Tiago Splitter, maybe for one year, or we bring back Samuel Dallenberg. So let's go with Tiago Splitter. He signed, so that is definitely good. And let's look at our roster. So we have LeBron James, we have Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, Kemba Walker, Amir Johnson. I guess we could take another crack at it, another shot. Hopefully we can win it this year. Look at our player progression. LeBron actually went down. Jimmy Butler stayed the same. Kemba Walker went up. Dwayne Wade went down three. So that's definitely going to hurt us a lot. Denzel Valentine went up. Amir Johnson went down. So changes the dynamics a little bit. But we're going to give this one last run. And see if we can successfully rebuild this team. So I think 2019 draft class really does not matter. Because we're not going past the season regardless. So training camps. I guess untapped potential. We're going to go with Valentine. Hopefully he can improve during the season. That would be great. And I guess let's go with, typically I could just go with untapped potential. But I'm thinking maybe we go and upgrade one of our big men because we're going to need them to be able to do something. So let's go with Amir Johnson. I know he is old. See if we can just improve him enough to try to get some type of boost this season. And let's go ahead and simulate, um, I think, the season. I don't think we need any moves right now. Really no moves to make. Our contract situation is terrible. We're negative $10 million in the hole. So we'll go ahead and simulate this regular season. Like always, I'll come back to you guys at the end of the regular season. All right, you guys. So we finished this season 54-28. and 28, But LeBron James is the MVP, you guys. So we finally get another MVP since Derrick Rose in Chicago. Just under 25 points a game. Did average 10 assists. I mean, 10 rebounds, excuse me, 8 assists. A game. Troy Brown is the rookie of the year. Jeremy Lin, the sixth man of the year in Brooklyn. DeAndre Jordan, once again, defensive player of the year. Uh, Monte Eunice is going to be the most improved player. And then Steve Kerr in the 60 and 22. Golden State Warriors are going to be coach of the year. So let's look at this, see what players we get. We get LeBron James on the all NBA first team. Nobody on the second team. Nobody on the third team. Defensive team. Nobody. We get LeBron James on the second defensive team, and I don't think we got anybody else. So second rookie team, we got Kelvin Teague um, on the all-rookie second team. So let's go ahead. We are a one seed against the Milwaukee Bucks. So let's look at our roster, look at their roster, and let's see whose roster is better. They have Ante Kupo, they got Jabari Parker, they got Chris Middleton, they got Greg Monroe, Darren Collison. The Hound Maker. They have a fantastic roster. They even have Damari Carroll and Matthew Delavadova, Langston Galloway, who made this team an eight seed. This is definitely going to be up uphill battle. But we're a one seed. We cannot lose in the first round. We win game one, which is good. Win game two. We win game three. Could we actually pull off a sweep? No, we cannot. But we're able to win in five. So it's definitely good. But now we're taking on the Brooklyn Nets. So let's look at their roster right now. See how they match up against us. So they got Mike Conley, so they paid a whole lot of money for that. Um, Jeremy Lin, Hassan Whiteside, guys, um, Karis LeVert. They got a pretty decent team. I think our team, I don't know. They, their team is up there with ours as well. So let's go ahead and simulate this. We win game one. We lose game two. We need to win game three. We're able to do that. Can we win game four? Yes, we can. Can we close it out in five? Yes, we can. So back-to-back -back series ending in five games. And we have a rematch with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So let's look at their roster now. They got Kyrie Irving, they got Kevin Love, Gordon Hayward, Tristan Thompson, um, J.R. Smith, 
Gallinari, who is the new addition. So is Mason Plumley, I believe. George Hill, K. Fielder, Gary Harris. They got a pretty good team as well. But let's see what happens. We have home court advantage, and we win game one. Can we win game two? We cannot. So we lose home court. We lose it because we lose game three. We lose game four. And can this be the end of the video? No, it's not because we win game five. Can we win game six? We win game six. And we are now here for a game seven. So let me go ahead and readjust this lineup right now. Our players are absolutely tired. Look at this. Dwayne Wade is exhausted. LeBron James is exhausted. And Mir Johnson is exhausted. But I need them to somehow try to suck this up, you guys. Because we have one game here that we need to win. Let's go to SimCast. And let's see if we can pull this off. So, right away, back and forth matchup. The literally the lead is just changing hands. We go off with a little lead right there, which is definitely good. Second quarter, we have the lead still. We are pulling away, but you never know. We can give up comebacks. We almost did it last season. So, we have a lead here. 10 point lead going into the fourth quarter. And this game is extremely close, you guys. And we lose the lead. We regain it, though, at the very end. So we had a huge lead, gave it up again, but we're able to hold on. And we are advancing to the NBA Finals. LeBron James had 31, 7, and 8. Kemba Walker had 20 points. Ronnie Hood had 12 points. Not bad at all. Kevin Love, Gordon Hayward, Gallinari. So. Very tough matchup there in the game seven over there as well. And this time it's going to be the Golden State Warriors. So, our luck, we're going to be taking on the Warriors. Let's look at their roster right now. They still have Stephen Curry. They still have Kevin Durant. They still have Draymond Green. They still have Klay Thompson. They have a very good lineup. We have more depth than they do. Let's find out what happens. We're not going to, I don't want to lose two NBA Finals in a row. Let's see what happens. We lose game one. We lose game two, but we're coming back to Chicago. Can we win? We lose game three. Now we're just trying to avoid being swept, and we get swept, you guys. So we are unsuccessful in this rebuild. We really, we really tried. We had a pretty good roster, I think. We got pretty much embarrassed here in game four. 126, 297. Could not get it done. Let's go ahead and take a look at our final roster here, you guys. We had LeBron James. We had Jimmy Butler. We had Kemba Walker. We had Dwayne Wade. I tried to keep that nucleus there. I tried to keep Jimmy Butler there the whole time. I tried to keep Dwayne Wade. I do like the fact that LeBron James did join Dwayne Wade in Chicago. That's definitely a nice touch right there. Valentine ended up being a 79 overall. So did Ronnie Hood at a 78. And Mira Johnson, we probably could have had a little bit of a better center. But he was able to match in the best center we could get with that salary cap space we had. Marcus Morris wasn't bad. Spencer Dinwiddie improved up to a 77 as well. But that's it, you guys. We could not get it done. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave this video a like. And let me know in the comment section below what moves would you have liked to see me do differently. Um, what do you think would have improved our team? Because we were very close twice. Two opportunities, could not get it done. So let me know how I could have improved in the comment section below. And also, let me know what team you want me to try to rebuild next. And we'll go ahead and try to make that happen. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please go ahead and leave this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's your boy D. Lloyd. I'm going to see you all next time. Peace.